The Cinema 4D interface is comprised of menus, managers, and viewports, all contained inside of a shell window. This shell allows the programmers to bypass the operating system and make the application identical between operating systems. The only difference is the control key on PCs and the command key on Macs. So as you can see here, I'm on a Macintosh, and Cinema 4D is actually existing inside of a shell, and if I move this window around, that shell moves with it. The first thing you'll notice about this shell is that there's no menus across the menu bar. The only thing you see at the top menu bar is the Apple menu and Cinema 4D and the window menu, which allows you to close and minimize. None of the other menu items are contained in the Macintosh interface. They're all inside of this window. The next thing you'll notice is that there's a lot of menus. If you look across the top here, we've got the main menu bar, and then each of these windows around it has its own set of menu items. And so when I'm going to be working through these lessons with you, I'm going to be very specific about which menu I'd like you to access. So let's talk about the interface in a little bit more and work our way around it. We're going to be working sort of clockwise around the interface. So across the top here, we've got a menu bar. And this menu bar duplicates a lot of the functionality in all these icons that we see on screen. You could actually, if you wanted to, hide all the icons in the interface by customizing it and then work just off of menus. So even though the icons are there on screen, you can always get to them by clicking and pulling on one of these menus. So right below the main menu bar is the main toolbar or icon bar. And this icon bar contains icons for a lot of different functions. There's functions for undo and redo. There's movement and navigation tools. There's axis-oriented tools, rendering tools, and then objects that you can use for constructing your scene, as well as filters for controlling what objects you select in the scene, and also something called the content browser, which is a way for navigating through your computer without actually leaving the application. Next up clockwise on our trip through the interface is the object manager. The object manager is the physical representation of whatever you have in your scene. Now I'm going to add a cube object, and we'll talk more about how to create objects in a subsequent movie. But if I click on the cube icon right here, I'm going to add a cube to the scene. Now you notice that I have a cube here in the scene, and now I have a cube in the object manager. The object manager is divided now into three columns, and these columns are very important. You have the object column. You have the middle status column, and you have the tag column over here on the right. In the object column, I'm able to change the name of my object. I could change the name of this cube by double-clicking on it and calling it Super Cube. The status column shows me the status of my object. Is it attached to a layer? Is it going to be visible in the editor or render window, which is what these two dots right here represent? If I select my Super Cube, and go to the basic properties of this supercube. And this window down here is called the Attribute Manager, and we're going to talk about that more in a subsequent movie as well. I can see that I've got some items here and some choices. The Visible and Editor and Visible and Render elements are related to these two dots. If I change the Visible and Editor to on. It's set to default right now, which means the dot is gray. If I change it to on, it's going to turn green. That means the object will always be visible in the editor window. If I change it to off, now it's invisible in the editor window, but it will show up in the render. And same thing goes for the visible and editor icon. If I change this to on, it will always render, even though it's not visible in the editor window. And if I change it to off, it will be off. This may seem a little bit confusing now, but we'll talk more about this in another movie. Let's keep moving through the interface. So the attribute manager shows us the modifiable properties of our objects. And this manager will change depending on what type of object you have selected. And it will change whether or not you have a tool or an object selected. For example, if I click on this icon up here in the main icon bar, this is the Move tool. If I click on that, I now see the properties for the Move tool. If I click on the Selection tool right next to it, I see the properties for the Selection tool. If I click on my Super Cube, I see the properties for the Super Cube. So this Attribute Manager changes continuously throughout your working experience. Right next to the Attribute Manager is the Coordinate Manager. The Coordinate Manager shows you the location of the access point for your object or your selected objects in the scene or the components of those objects as well. And that's a big difference. In the Attribute Manager, you have a coordinate property for your object. So for example, I click on my cube, I see the coordinate properties. And these coordinate properties show me where my cube is. And we'll talk more about those in another movie as well. The Coordinate Manager can show me those same values, but it can also show me where the subcomponents that make up that cube are as well. Next to the Coordinate Manager is the Material Manager. And the Material Manager is where we create materials that are going to give our objects color and texture. 
and it has its own separate menu items that allow us to create new materials. And I can create a new material, and that material has its own set of attributes that show up in the Attribute Manager. Right above the Material Manager are the time controls. Now I have a time slider right here that allows me to navigate in time. Cinema 4D is an animation package, and you can animate in frames over time. And that allows you to create really incredible animation effects. But fundamental that is moving through time. And this green rectangle, if I click and hold on it and drag left or right, I'm now navigating through time in my interface. And this window here indicates the frame that I'm currently parked on. If I move my green rectangle to frame 35, you'll see it shows me that I'm on frame 35 right here. Now this field is the preview range. The preview range shows me how many frames I'm going to see in this time slider. Right now it defaults from 0 to 90, or 91 frames, but if I want to see just 60 frames, I can go from frame 0 to frame 59, 5, 9, and I can type in 5, 9 and hit enter or return on the keyboard, and you saw that my time slider shifted in size. I'm now only looking at 59 frames. Now keep in mind, these values have no impact on how many frames you can render, it's just a preview range. The preview range can also be controlled by dragging this little handle left or right, and I can zoom into my preview range by dragging that left or right. The limit on it is controlled by this field right here. Right next to the preview range are the playback controls, and I can rewind my animation back to zero, I can hit play, play forward, I can also play backwards, and I can skip one frame at a time, so I can click through my frames, or I can go to the right to the end of the animation. I can also record keyframes with these red icons, and we'll talk about those in the animation chapter. So continuing around the interface, on the left-hand side of the window are the modes icons. These icons change the way our tools behave, and so I call them mode icons because calling the tools would be very confusing for me. So I've been using the program for a very long time, and this is just one spot where I just disagree with the way the programmers intended it. And so if you look at the manual, it'll say tools, but I call them modes. Also, there's a hint bar down at the very bottom of the interface. If you look at this little area right here next to the current time indicator, if I hover over one of these icons, and over any icon in the interface, I will get a little hint telling me what that icon means. And you'll see that as I hover over this icon, it's called the Use Model Tool. Now I call that Model Mode, and I'll do that consistently throughout this series. This icon here, which looks like a ball changing into a gridded ball, is the Make Object Editable icon, and we'll talk about that in the modeling chapter. The button right above it is the Layout button, and the Layout button allows us to switch the arrangement of our palettes and menus and icons. So if I click on this and hold, I can switch the layout from the standard layout, which is what we're looking at right now, to something called the Animation Layout. It's the same application. We've just rearranged the palettes and icons to optimize them for animating on a single screen. I'm going to switch back to the standard layout by clicking on that and going back to standard. This interface can seem intimidating because there's a lot of stuff here. But as we work through this essential training series, we're going to be going through each of these in much more detail. And I think you'll find that once you get used to them, they're going to make a lot of sense.